Good evening. Uh, my name is Ken Smith. I'm uh, honored to, and privileged to serve as the mayor of the city of Beta. It's an uh, opportunity and uh, regularly scheduled city council meetings, which this is, uh, to call these meetings to order, which I will do at um, 6.02 p.m. on uh, this, the 14th of <coughs> June, 2018. We are grateful to have uh, all of you present with us and uh, I hope that uh, we can uh, come together in unity in this community and uh, have a productive city council meeting. Especially grateful to have our city council members with us as well. But we'll codify your presence uh, by having a roll call and would we'll invite our city clerk to do that for us. Judy Costello? Here. Jason Daly? Here. Joe Shy? Here. Mike Parsons? Here. Fiona Sander Hunter. Here. And the mayor. Also present. <laughs> so with that, we do have a quorum. I'm grateful to Mike and, and his presence of, by uh, the telephone uh, from California, I believe. So uh, with this quorum, let's proceed with our Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Would you do this, please? I, I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> We'll uh, now uh, proceed uh, with uh, the mayor's report on our agenda. Uh, there are four uh, specific items. Uh, first, I wanted to update uh, uh, council and others uh, of um, our progress on their A Street project. Uh, we've uh, been monitoring its uh, work carefully, and um, I'm pleased to report that it's all going according to contractual uh, uh, particulars, and so uh, the long-awaited event has come, effective uh, January or July, June 11th. Uh, the project should last about 45 days, uh, but um, uh, so far, uh, so good. So I hope that uh, people will know that uh, progress is happening in our community. We're grateful to all who have uh, helped to make that happen. I would, I would like to make a comment about it. Mm -hmm. Every one of those men are on time. Not one of them are late for work. They start at five to seven. <laughs> five minutes to seven. Beep, beep. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm really impressed with the porta potty in my front door. Oh, right. Yeah, extremely impressed with that. So you're getting that a full sensory interlude. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Well, if it needs to be shifted, we can... I'm not worried about it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, let's proceed to item number two, then. Update on our 4th of July preparations. Uh, so far, the Visions for Vader group is uh, uh, handling things well. Uh, they've, uh, they're looking for vendors. If anybody might be interested in uh, an organization, uh, we've approached a, a couple of uh, uh, local organizations uh, to see if they would like to participate in that, and they're still looking. But um, uh, we've received an unexpected uh, gift from the fireworks company, who, for uh, a couple of reasons, uh, felt uh, like they wanted to give additional support to the City of Vader's Fourth of July event, and they volunteered an extra $2,000 of fireworks at no cost to the community. So that uh, raises our total over $5,000 worth of fireworks, all of which are uh, going to be uh, fired off at the school property uh, with their approval. And we're in complete compliance with all the state and, uh, and uh, local uh, uh, regulations. So uh, we're very pleased with it. It's going to be a uh, uh, worth your time and effort to be here. So bring as many people as you can to that event. Uh, update on our uh, next item, update on our preschool. <coughs> I'm sure you've noticed that um, they've been working uh, on that with uh, moving the dirt around and getting the facility uh, ready for occupancy. 
when we last reported, I think I will let you know that uh, the school district is um, would hope to accomplish everything by uh, to make it ready for occupancy by June 15th. But uh, as of this afternoon, our latest uh, report from the school district is that uh, they're looking now between June 22nd and 27th uh, to have uh, everything done. They are quite excited about finally getting to that point of occupancy. And uh, they added as a bonus that uh, uh, they have so far 13 preschool students signed up for the 2018 and 19 school year. That is a remarkable number. So Mr. Mappet is very pleased with how things are going. So yeah, that's also an exciting evidence of progress in our community. Uh, last item, um, <coughs> number four, wanted to uh, uh, brief the council members. I've talked to some of you uh, 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 individually about that situation. And Mr. Peltier has submitted his resignation um, uh, two weeks ago, and uh, that um, uh, resulted in his uh, official termination. He was an at-will employee, of course. And so uh, we've uh, set in motion a uh, uh, hiring process, uh, advertising for his replacement. And uh, we've had three individuals respond so far. Uh, our, our strategy is because uh, Owen oh, John, our public works employee, is doing the dailies, so we're staying on top of that. Okay. And we've been contacted by the city of Winlock, and they've offered to provide assistance in it if we felt it was necessary. I worked with their mayor on the matter, and he's very uh, supportive, and so is the officials with Carl Jones with the Department of Ecology. But uh, they're okay with uh, how we're handling the situation, and we, uh, I think I indicated, uh, we had the advertisement out for four days, I think it's four, and we've had three individuals express interest in it. I've interviewed all three of them, and I'm hoping to make a decision by Tuesday of next week for council's confirmation. So that's where we stand on that situation. Uh, that, I think that's it. all that uh, I have to report is uh, in the mayor's report. So, uh, council, any reports from the council? I do, but please first. Um, my only report was I had uh, some people in the community that expressed uh, their desire for a car show, and I was wondering if that's something that the city would want to add to, like the Fourth of July. Uh, celebration is, I think it would fall really good into the, I don't know if we have enough time this year, but I mean for for years in the in the future, I think, you know, gosh, it, we've lost, we've lost the car show, and it's like, it used to be like the first car show of the year kind of thing, right. same with like May Day, mm -hmm. deal. so um, I said that I would, I'd bring it up and see, see what we thought, um, it's kind of a money maker too, you know, as far as entry fees, and it might be something good for the park. So, well, I know, Mike, uh, you have some um, considerable involvement. I, I think that that would be great. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that would be great, even if we could do uh, just a few this year. If anybody's willing to bring it and park it on D Street, I think that we could make a section for it. Um, because it is so, so short term um, that, you know, we might not get as many, but I think that'd be awesome. We do, um, I have a, a citizen that's going to be putting on a cornhole tournament uh, for the 4th of July. And um, then the banner out on I-5 is getting put up. Hopefully this week it will be up. It's a 6 by 12 super bright and uh, uh, I would love to have a car show, Jason. I think that'd be great. Do you think it's uh, too... Uh, well, I, I don't know. See, the, the way you... It was explained to me is, you know, you, you do the invites and then you, you know, you make a $5, you know, uh, you know the donation fee for a fee. And then everyone wants a trophy 
or some kind of something, you know. So, but um, you know, just I'm just trying to think of stuff that would make the day longer, you know, instead of just having people come just for you know the fireworks, you know, right before dark, or you know, the vendors and things would would be happy to. I don't know. It always seems to bring in a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I'm making I'm making calls to uh, a couple vendor lists that I just got. Um, I did get a shaved ice uh, vendor. It's actually a trailer. Looks really nice. She should be submitting her application uh, tonight or tomorrow. And then I'm waiting to hear back from a uh, food vendor. Um, uh, one of them that's here in Pleasanton said, hey, I think I have one of my trailers in Clark County, and I might be able to get up there. So hopefully that will come to fruition too. Uh, but yeah, I agree. We need more stuff there. Well, so, what would it take for the community to reach out to the, the car show? I don't know a lot of car show people, but um, as far as like car show people, would uh, <laughs> 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 yeah. Mayhanger know? Yeah, she would know for sure. Doug Clevenger. Oh, Doug. Huh? Yeah. Al Banks. Those are, yeah, the, Al. those are the car show people that have been running the country cruisers. Well, uh, I'm a very close friend of Doug Clevenger. I could probably call him tomorrow morning and see what sort of interest we can generate on that. Mm -hmm. Do you think we should uh, you be supportive of that, Mike? Of getting Doug Clevenger? Uh oh. Uh -oh. Well, this isn't an official agenda item. Right. Why don't yeah, we discuss just, that afterwards okay. and um, we'll set some things in motion as best we can. Alrighty. Uh, then, um, any other council? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, just, I just want to point out that um, if you drive around, there's a lot of yards that are looking really nice. People are getting the grass on the cut, they're doing some planting, and the gardens are looking good. Everything is looking super, super nice. And that being said, I want to remind everybody that you can get a voucher to dump. A thousand pounds are free. Dump. So if you don't have a truck, if you don't have a trailer, ask your neighbor, call City Hall and say, hey, you know anybody that can help me out? And let's get some of this stuff out of Bader and get it up for free. <coughs> There, yes. Oh. Mind if I make a comment about that as Please. well? Yeah, right. um, so we also have um, really nice wood chip composting material at the transfer station right now that you can come and you have to load it yourself. But we've got you know several hundred tons there that we're offering to the public for free. Um, so it's really good for gardens. It's great for composting. If anybody needs wood chips, mulch type stuff, then you can come get some for free now at in Centralia at the transfer station. I was actually there this morning and <coughs> filled the back end of a pickup with that. <laughs> <laughs> so it is really impressive. That's stuff. Nice and stuff. it's free. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. <coughs> thank you for that. <coughs> well, me, I should, uh, you know, I'm remiss in not recognizing our dignitaries with us. Uh, I'm going to start with Gary Stamper, our county commissioner. Uh, it's always a, a privilege, a pleasure to have you with us. And uh, Betsy I Dillon, you're going to be way. giving a report, and Eric Martin, uh, the new public works director uh, for those <coughs> County. Thank you for being here. We did have another comment. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Julie. Um, my comment is um, country cruisers and the different ones, all the dignitaries who I know, they usually try to do early morning things so that it wouldn't interfere and the day would get longer. Um, that is my suggestion. Sure, okay. Because they can park them at, you know, if it's just D Street you guys want to do, or yeah. they can pick a park, M Murphy, you know, whichever, whichever mm -hmm. one you guys want to open it up. So we'll bounce that off. Of yeah. We'll uh, <coughs> let them know that. Okay. <clears throat> All right then. Uh, we'll let that. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. I want to thank whoever did the update on the website. Thank you very much. 
Um, I went on today and looked at it, and it's nice and clean. It has current items on there, so yay. And, and the um, um, position is even posted on there for yes. public works. Yes. Um, I had the opportunity this week to sit down with the mayor of Winlaw, Mr. Bradshaw. Um, he informed me that the Solid Waste Advisory Committee has a chair with Vader's name sitting on it. Yes. And it is the first Wednesday of every month at 1.30, and he invited me to come to it if I was inclined. Also, um, I asked him, how did you get all those dumpsters to do your citywide cleanup? And he said it was basically by attending these meetings for so many years and being a part of this committee. So I thought if that is a way that our community could maybe get some dumpsters brought in. They did almost 10,000 pounds, he said plus all the recycling of metal and just all kinds of cleanup, and they had it for a week. So I'm willing to go and take that happy little chair um, if it's okay. Yes, I, I should probably talk to you about that, uh, that after the council meeting. Okay. No, but okay. thank you for that. But, but no, I just wanted to report that that's an avenue that I did not know was available. I guess Lois was our last, Lois Wilson was the last person. Um, that filled that position. Yep. Yeah, it's been a while. yeah, we've brought it to council yes. a couple of different times, but right. never had anyone volunteer to do it. So. Okay, cool. Right. Little known position. All right. Uh, okay, but uh, with that, other council yep. topics. Okay. All right. Then let's proceed with our uh, the approval of our official agenda. Is this where I get to add? Yes. <clears throat> I would like to add two things if possible. One would be um, council absence. I'd like to have a discussion about the telephone. And the second would be um, the reader board, which is on the city shop. Okay. Simple, quick. Okay. So. Uh, you would like to submit a motion, adding yes, those two yes. items? Yes. So I would await a motion. Um, I'd like to make a motion to approve the City Council meeting agenda for 6-14-2018, adding uh, line item number six, um, council absence discussion, and number seven, reader board discussion. Okay. <clears throat> You've heard the motion submitted by Mrs. Costello to approve the agenda. Uh, with the addition of two items, number six, council discussion on the uh, absence of council members, and uh, item number seven, discussion on the reader board. So, do we have a second for that motion? I'll second. Seconded uh, by uh, Leona. So, uh, any additional <coughs> thoughts or commentary? Hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Okay, the voting was unanimous. So with that, so let's proceed now with the approval of our minutes from our previous city council meeting. Hopefully you've had a chance to review those. I'll make a motion that we approve the city council meeting minutes from 524-2018 as written. Okay, Mr. Daly submitted a motion to approve those minutes as written. We have a second. I'll second. Seconded by Mrs. Costello. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Are, are there any opposed? The motion is carried. <coughs> Voucher approvals. I'll make a motion to approve the vouchers for the first half of June 2018 in the amount of $27,310.27. Mr. Shai submitted a motion to approve <coughs> the vouchers in the amount noted. <coughs> Do we have a second? I'll second. Seconded by Mr. Daly. All in favor say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? The motion is carried. <coughs> now, it will be our privilege to hear a couple of special reports. <coughs> the first is um, from Betsy Dillon. Representative Lewis County will give us a report on the, the water storage of the reservoir project. Yep, we just wanted to come down to give you guys a, an update on our big project. Um, 
what's been going on and what we expect for the future. So we, um, this project went out to bid on, in late April. We opened bids and as expected, they were higher than what we had, um, had already gotten secured for funding. So um, after that, we, we applied for subsequent funding from USDA and we have recently, um, it's recently been approved. So we've got more grant and more loan to cover mm -hmm. the remainder of the project. And so we're gonna, we're going to award the bid on Monday. Um, what one thing that is kind of been unexpected is that the contractor has told us that the material lead times is are like uh, they're a lot higher than what they had previously been, um, mostly because of steel tariffs. Is what their that's their explanation. So instead of a few weeks. We're looking at three to four months for materials. So what that means for our project is that it probably won't be completed this summer as we were hoping. It will probably go through, probably go through next summer. Um, but we can get started this this summer. We we have um, earthwork and stuff to do that can that can get going. But it'll it'll lengthen the overall schedule. Um, the other the other thing is that. We did have to take on some more additional loan as part of the grant agreement because they only do a percentage. So we're also starting our budget cycle and we're looking at our budgets and it is going to look like this is going to, we're going to need a, a rate increase for this year. So we wanted to let you guys know early and ahead of time that that's something that we're looking at. Did that forget anything? No, um, I, I would say um, just from a background standpoint, if you re if you recall, we came and I think we gave some reports here, maybe maybe earlier this year or late last year. Um, and so the um, just to give a little background for those of you who are unfamiliar with the project, it was a reservoir project, additional reservoirs on the site of the plant. Um, and it, when it was originally contemplated, um, there was a um, community development block grant, which would we which. <coughs> our predecessors had thought would cover the cost and um, as time went on and we had a consultant involved and steel prices increased um, the costs were were not were not going to work with that grant so last year we sort of halted the project Betsy um, has done a ton of work to go out and find additional funding and she's done that through the Department of Agriculture the US Department of Agriculture um, unfortunately those grant loan programs are just that. They actually have a loan associated with the grant, so we, we don't have a choice but to take on that if we want to complete the project. Um, and then um, as we got into bidding, um, the, the further we got along and hadn't secured funding yet, the more the prices went up and up and up, and they've gone um, up. You know, according to our consultant who does these kind of projects all over the place, um, you know, as much as 50% the price of steel for these type of projects has gone up in the last 12 to 18 months. So it's, you know, it's, it's somewhat out of our control. We, you know, we're doing everything we can. We had a, we actually had a value engineering session with the, with the consultant to try to find ways to save, save costs on this project. And so we're going to do everything we can to um, be as frugal as we can with it. But it is an expensive project. So any, any questions? Yes, ma'am. How much do you think the rates are going to go up for the water? You want to? You want to? <laughs> it's really hard to say. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Because we, there's a lot of, there's a number of ways we can look at doing it. We can look at doing small increases over a number of years, or we, we want to avoid a big increase in one year. Um, so I, I, don't, I don't have a good answer for that because we're also budgeting right now. Um, and that's just one piece of the puzzle for our budget. Yeah. So from a timeline standpoint, to, to better answer your question, when we can have a more definite answer for you. And we'll be budgeting through, um, probably through July. We need to submit our budget to the county commissioners in early August. Um, and so we'll probably have a better answer sometime in late July on what we think the increase would be either now or at the first of the year and then going forward. So um, it's... You know, it, 
to cover the loan itself, um, we could be looking in the neighborhood of ten to twenty dollars a month. Um, and so that's a significant increase. And I wanted to, I wanted to say that number because I don't want people to be shocked when we come back. Now we're going to do everything we can to keep that as low as possible, or stretch it out over time, whatever we can do. But um, that's you know that's that's the reality of what this project has has um, kind of created. So. And that was a monthly, because <clears throat> we do, we, but that is a monthly pot. It would be, it would be five to ten dollars per month. So. But so ten to twenty per bill could oh, okay. potentially be what we're looking okay. at. So, um, again, we're going to try to keep that, you know, as as low as we can. Um, but that's that's where we're at. So. I think it's um, you know, it's always a, a sticker shock when you face the realities of these things. But it's wise to remember the uh, overall benefit that this um, will bring to our community. It is a, an aging facility. It costs a, a lot of money the older they are to maintain. Right, the interior you need to get scuba divers in there to make sure that the walls are clean and such. So, I personally know that I'm on a fixed income, so it uh, hurts uh, me just as much as the rest of you. And uh, just to give another perspective, the total project cost is estimated to be about $1.8 million, and um, one point, more than one and a half of that is in grants. So our loan is for two hundred eighty thousand dollars on a one point eight million dollar project. So it's you are getting a lot for your money. Well, thank you for that. That is an extremely high percentage compared to these people. I think only the county would have the muscle as a throw weight to pull that off. So thank you for that. Well, all right. Well, thank you for that report. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. <coughs> Share that with us. <coughs> okay. Whew. All right. And with that. Can we adjourn the meeting? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all out of sale. <laughs> yeah, this. We have too much more fun. Oh, goodness gracious. So let's step uh, now in uh, the uh, our second report is with the. Uh, uh, the Deputy Chiefsman with the Lewis County Sheriff's Office, the May Activity Report. Yeah, for May. So, so. Uh, so May had lots of contacts. Of course, we had May Day, so that was yeah. most of, uh, over half of the contacts were there. So you had 541 contacts, uh, five calls on shift, a total of 17 calls for a month, uh, 32 traffic stops, four traffic infractions, and a misdemeanor arrest. And you had uh, three crimes, a burglary, which was suspended, and then a, you had two assaults, a felony assault and a misdemeanor assault, and those were cleared by arrest. So, so. Okay. What? Do you have a question about the death investigation? <laughs> you see that on there. Well, it does kind of just jump right off the page. I know. I figured you were. Uh, so here's an explanation pretty good on that. The sheriff's office will investigate any deaths that occur at your home. So any death that occurs outside of a medical facility or outside of being arranged with the coroner. So you can, a lot of people like to go home and especially terminally ill patients, they want to go home and die so they'll, they'll be registered with the coroner's office and we don't investigate those. Those are, but any other deaths that occur, whether they're natural deaths or accidental deaths or whatever, but we treat them all the same, that they're just deaths. And so they, so they aren't termed that until later on down the line to where, number one, the investigation takes place, the coroner takes over and does all the tests, and, and if an autopsy is done, then all that comes down. And it, and it usually works out to about eight or nine months before they finally come out with a certificate that says whatever on those whole deals. But we treat them all the same as a death investigation, so. Great. Alrighty. That explains that a little better. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you very much uh -huh. for that report. I appreciate it. Okay, with that, then well, let's proceed with our city business. <coughs> uh, the first item is the council to consider the park board and planning committee uh, assignments. 
This is a carryover from our last City Council meeting. As you're aware, we had two openings on our park board, and um, uh, with some searching, we did uh, find two individuals who have expressed a considerable interest in um, serving on that committee. And uh, after interviewing uh, them, I felt comfortable proposing them for your confirmation. I've invited all three of them to be, uh, or two of the park board members. Um, and um, uh, both of them indicated they would be here, and we're pleased to have um, one of the individuals, um, Alina Knight, with us. So, um, you've read in my uh, letters involving uh, each of them that they are individuals who I think um, have their characteristics, the attributes, and, and um, leadership and, and um, uh, skills uh, that will uh, enable them to contribute uh, quite well on that park board. So I would um, submit to their names, Calista, uh, I mean, uh, Keisha. Uh, Keisha, Calista, and Elena Knight to serve as members of that park board. And uh, would it await council action? With those nominations. Is this in the form of a motion? Yes. Well, I will make a motion to accept, or is that the proper terminology? Or confirm. Uh, to confirm uh, Elena Knight, and this is Kalista, mm -hmm. as uh, park board, new park board members. Oh, excellent. Well, you've heard the motion submitted by Mrs. Costello to confirm uh, those two individuals. And, Keisha Callista and Alina Knight as park board members. Do we have a second for that motion? I'll second. I'll second. Okay, well, we have seconded by Mrs. Hunter. So, uh, any other conversation? Okay, hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Ah, the voting was unanimous. Okay. Congratulations, <laughs> <Yes>. Alina. <laughs> When is the next meeting, please? This Monday. Yes, this Monday. It's coming right up, yeah. 6 o'clock. <coughs> and uh, then, uh, as you've been aware, we had um, a vacancy on our planning committee, and um, I interviewed an individual who has expressed a great deal of interest in serving on that <coughs> committee. His name is Tom Carruthers. A long-time resident who actually lives right next door to City Hall. <coughs> so, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. He's plugged in. Uh, he's uh, aware of uh, the city and he's eager to lend a hand in uh, the planning needs. So, um, I feel comfortable in submitting it. He indicated that he was going to be here at 6.20, but um, it, it so often happens. Right? <coughs> But nonetheless, I'm confident that he's uh, going to be a participatory member of the planning committee. So I'd um, await council action for that nomination. Well, I know Tom, so I will make a motion that we accept Tom on our planning committee as a new member. All right, thank you. And uh, with, we've heard the motion submitted by Mrs. Costello to confirm the nomination. <coughs> of Tom Carruthers to serve on our planning committee. We have a second. I'll second that. Huh? Seconded by Mr. Dale. And then with that, um, all in favor say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Excellent. Well, then uh, with that, I think that um, uh, given the fact that we have two of them not here, um, I would um, suggest, I mean, if you don't mind, we will we will uh, uh, swear you in uh, at a later date. Oh. Okay. All right. And you can come to City Hall and um, any time, and we'll take care of that. But after the meeting, uh, let us know. Okay. okay. All right. With that, let's proceed with our next item. <clears throat> Update on the additional paving project. That was uh, we were hoping. <coughs> carry over from our last council meeting. Right. Um, I did meet with uh, Barcott uh, yesterday and Devin Jackson, Civil Engineering, and we walked um, this section of A Street over here. 
um, between eighth and ninth. Uh, they're going they they're going to give us um, some bids on uh, what that would cost to do. Um, and uh, if we can afford that, then you guys will see a contract at some point here in the near future. And if we can't afford it, uh, Devin Jackson said that he will submit it into the TIB um, grant for this next year's funding cycle. Oh, so either way, we're going to try to go for it. But the, the speculation is that it will probably be out of our reach. It will probably be out of our reach. They do recommend that they rebuild the entire roadway because um, there is no roadway in, in, in places. <laughs> um, and they'd rather not put asphalt down and have it <coughs> fail right away, um, especially with um, all of the uh, upcoming um, large vehicle traffic with the sewer plant um, accessed on that road. So it needs to be, needs to be done well. So. Right. So thank you for that. For you. To be continued. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Let's proceed with item number three. Continued discussion on RVs as accessory <coughs> dwelling units. Uh, this was a council discussion in our previous two or three council meetings. So um, I would invite the council to continue to deliberate on that. Okay. Yes, you do. Um, I can report that um, his council asked me to check into um, the county and their regulations, and um, so our city planner has helped a little bit with this. And I have reached out uh, to the um, to the county. I have not heard back from the county yet, but um, our city planner was able to uh, talk to some someone. I'm not sure who it was. Um, at the county that, that said really their biggest concern with uh, that they're having challenges with the RVs as dwelling units is that they don't meet fire codes. And so allowing them uh, to writing a regulation that allows them as a permanent residence is difficult uh, because they don't meet standard regulations for fire codes. And so but that's about as far as we've gotten and um, as far as the information I have for you. Um, we're continuing to reach out and try to get some, some more answers. Um, I know it's a really busy time of year for that planning and developing department at the county, so um, we try to be patient and they get back to us when they get a minute. Um, so I'm continuing to look into that, but that's really the only new information that I have. So the question I would have is this, an RV does not meet fire code? Fire, the way I understand it, they don't meet the fire code as a permanent residence. I don't know, apparently that may be different than driving something on the road and staying in it temporarily, so hmm. I'm not sure. I'll have to, like I said, we're waiting to get some more information and some clarification on to what the challenges are there. So. There must be something else that goes along with that because I've got a couple friends that retired and sold everything mm -hmm. and that's all they do now is travel in their motorhomes and sure. all year long they live in these motorhomes and go to different places so there's got to yeah. be some loophole there or something. You have to move them every couple, so many months. Excuse me, just raise your hand. No, we won't. <laughs> Would you care to hear a comment? Sure. Yeah. Chris, go ahead. Um, from what I know about it is you have to move them every so many months, mm -hmm. like, yeah. you know, for like a week period of time or something like that. Yeah. Um, the city currently has uh, yeah. that uh, constraint. So, and that, like I said, I'm not sure why why it doesn't as a permanent residence, and when, if they move it, then it's okay for a little while. I don't know. We're waiting to get more information. I that. suppose when you mean move it, it can't be like a foot ahead or a foot No, no, it's no. got to be like a whole <laughs> yeah. Like a week. Move it. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we got two, two comments. I think we should hear Julie and then uh -huh. County Commissioner. Yeah. Well, well, I, I defer, I'll back out. Deferred. Well, I, yeah. I think probably the contact person mm -hmm. and, and uh, mm -hmm. Eric would probably agree with this. Get a hold of Doyle. Mm -hmm. Doyle be because he's the one that's he's the he's the fire guy in the county. Doyle. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I haven't mm -hmm. reached out to Doyle. I reached out to some other people. Yeah, he would be. Okay. In my opinion. Doyle. Really. Okay. We'll do that. Doyle Sanford is that? Yeah. Right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Suggestion. What's the time? 
Well, yeah, so, so this is just a passing <coughs> conversation I had. It's not my area of expertise or regulation. But the other issue that I've heard about RVs as ADUs is that oftentimes there's not an approved septic on the on the site, um, and that becomes an issue. Not that the people are um, not disposing of waste properly. They may be driving <coughs> somewhere and disposing it properly. Um, but to be considered an ADU on a lot, you must have an approved <coughs> septic. And so there are folks out there in on vacant land with an RV, but they don't have an approved septic, so they can't be an ADU. Mm -hmm. uh, that was just what was relayed to me through conversations I had with people that are involved in that. I'm not. Right. And so for the city, it would be different because we have sewer system, and they'd have to somehow be approved. They'd have to, to have be a approved connected. connection. Probably the yeah. same type of issue with yeah. septics or, or sewer system. Sure. Yeah. <coughs> Part of our challenge. <coughs> Okay, one last comment here. Mm -hmm. um, just um, on the, the sewer um, connection, I know for a fact that um, there are numerous um, portable uh, people who drive around, and that's all they do. Okay. And the company out of Toledo, they only charge $35, between $35 and $45 to empty a septic mm -hmm. on an RV unit. Okay. That's, that's cash payable, or you could be billed. Yeah, and, and that's a Toledo that. company? Yes. Mm -hmm. he, he drives a little, he, it's like one of our, it would be like um, a, a small dump truck, you know, tilt bed. Um, he puts a, a, a thing oh. and all he does, that's all it does, is he has a couple of tanks and he goes and hooks up and sucks it out and done. What <laughs> <laughs> it does, it's, it's like, you know, honey buckets. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, an additional yeah. comment? <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. Uh, what, what brought this up, though, wasn't just an RV on a vacant piece of land. It was an RV next to a home right. that her parent was staying in who's disabled. It wasn't meant, I mean, she has all the services. She's not like, you know, other ones that we have in mm -hmm. town that just are sitting there. And she, they keep excellent care of their property. It's neat and tidy. So I'm not sure that, are we confusing the two? Can't we just limit it to, if you have a house and you have a, mm -hmm. a, a family member that needs a dwelling next to you or behind you for the short term or oh, I thought that's yeah. where we were going with this right. was for the immediate uh, right uh, <laughs> ill or yeah, not, not something disabled. right right yeah. health or age you know kind of thing and yet the city doesn't want to expose itself to uh, other potential problems right. because uh, and most cases aren't as clear cut as what you're describing because I, I know that some people have hooked themselves up to the, our waste treatment system without um, seeking, uh, getting a permit to, to do it. And that's uh, the monkey wrench, I think, that is a, a challenge. But we don't need to uh, go Right, but I thought we were going to go by a permit system where you had to come in and, may, and fill out the application sure. and all of that kind of stuff. It wouldn't be just... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Anything. Another comment? And Donna was no. still. Well, oh, you were first. She has to go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I'm just going to say that thing about moving the RV, that has to do with the city's codes of allowing people to live in one. And we have that here. And if people thought, well, if we move it after the time limit, then bring it back in a week or two, we can start over again. Well, that hasn't got anything to do with somebody living in an RV. No, yeah, you can do that. It just let the city mm -hmm. know, unless I'm mistaken about that. That, that was uh, primarily to help people who might be building a home, mm -hmm. and so that they can have the accommodation to do it. Right, there's also another one about people visiting. There's a yeah, time frame yeah. on visitors. Yeah. Agreed. Okay, um, one more comment. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was a full-time RVer for a lot of years, and there was never a question about fire code. Uh, yes, we, we lived in parks, but there was never a question of fire codes, and we were hooked up to the parks, uh, water and sewer. So, I don't know where you're getting, I don't know who's getting this deal about our RVs, uh, uh, RV and fire code. Yeah. That was from own. Gary Cooper, our planner. He had a source and he just pointed it out. So. Yeah. 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 Ye
possible issue. So, you know, one thing that came up when I was reading all of our little packet here, um, <clears throat> oh, that was on a different thing, but anyway, um, was Joe suggested <clears throat> side yard. Right. Uh, side yard, and then I was noticing that it said one driveway. Mm -hmm. Must be accessible from the, the main, main driveway. Mm -hmm. The main driveway, okay. Where was that? That was... That was, our, that was our, our, our oh, oh, suggestions. These, are, these were some things that came up. Um, okay. Well, I sort of disagree with putting an age limit on the RV. As long as it passes an inspection after they get the permit, I guess. Yeah, but. that's kind of the way I look at it. Because mm -hmm. some of those little, some of the older vintage ones, I mean, and nobody's going to do that anyway. They're going to have their parent, which is basically what we're talking about on this. I don't think they're going to put their parent in one of the... I hope not. No. <laughs> no, no. I think it would be... Oh. Permit good for only maybe one year, and then they have to come back in and mm -hmm. and reevaluate. You know, be willing to let us look at it, or someone look at it, or you know. Yeah. Check the sewer connection. Huh? Check the sewer connection. <laughs> well, I yeah. think that would be done in the very beginning, and then you know, honestly, yeah, watch it. Really? Yeah, watch it throughout the year, whatever, and because I think. I'm going to have to read Well, we don't read the video, do we? Mm -hmm. See, there goes, there's, there's a problem, too, because then they're, I don't know. How do you well, in them? order for them to use the sewer, they would need to have water going down the pipes. So the water would have to be connected as well. And in theory, that would show up oh, on their yeah. water meter. So it would show up on the meter reads that we use for the sewer. So. In theory, I think that that would work out. Yeah. I have a question about the inspection. What kind of inspection are you talking about? Well, no blue tarps and... You can't have an RV without a blue tarp. Excuse me. They don't function If you like it, just pick another color. But this thing about hooking up to the farm and the sewer, you know, that's an, that's an easy thing to do. You just take a little hole and connect it to your sewer line, at least from your house, out to the street, and you hook a water hose up to the RV, and whatever, it goes on to the house anyway. I think they're making too big of an issue out of nothing. <coughs> no, I don't think it's as simple as you might make it sound. <laughs> you can't no just idea. hook up to the water system uh, and or the sewer system uh, without potentially uh, compromising the entire system in the community. So, But I'm not going to pretend I'm that much of an expert on it. I know there's reasons why uh, permits are appropriate. But anyway, so. Well, what would happen if we put a, a limit? Hang on for a second. What would happen if you if we put a limit of only three or four a year or something? I mean, because for what? For what? Three or four what? Um, 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 what would happen if we put? Okay. What would happen if we put a limit of three or four residents per year who could make application? Yeah. See a can of worms. Would it? Well, yeah. it was like a drawing. Well, I would eliminate everybody showing up wanting their sister, their whatever, to live. I mean, we're talking about a family member here, and most of them are their elderly mm. mother or father, and are both. You know, I just I, we're not talking about families moving in. You can imagine the, the administrators of it in the office having to tell the fourth candidate, whose father is a, a Congressional Medal of Honor winner and uh, who's got uh, uh, leukemia. Well, or maybe Orange. this is maybe this is all true, Mayor. But I'm just thinking. You know, I think we're uh, yeah, yeah, we're thinking. Right? We're thinking here. You know, um, what, if, what if we just put up an RV park, build a park? For these elderly people, 
to be still close to the family, to put a, figure out some piece of property and actually put an RV park in. Then it's going to meet all the codes, correct? And they can have their own hookups, and they can still be just close to their family. Who's Are gonna, you liking the, the limited amount better? Yeah. Hey, we can put them in your slop. That's <laughs> <laughs> right. in my slop. That's right. <laughs> Mrs. Radcliffe is ready. Yeah. Oh, yes. I tend to agree with Mrs. Rogers. It's really not that difficult. If somebody pulls into your house and they hook up to your hose, it's no different if you left the hose on in the garden. You know, and the sewer, like she would said, is is going to be counted when because you're using water. You know, and same with the power. You're going to be paying the power bill. You know, I, I think you're making this more difficult than it really needs to be. This is a, a family member that is going to be living next to you, and I, I don't agree with Mrs. Hunter. You don't want to put them in a park someplace. You kind of want them next door to you, I think, you know, so you can keep your eye on them or, you know, help them in an emergency, you know, so um, it, it shouldn't really, if you're paying for the water, you're paying for the sewer, you're paying for the electricity, why is it any of your business what they're doing as long as they're neat and tidy and they're not causing a, a environmental hazard and, you know, and that's, not, that's the problem, you know, that's why we want to get it, you know, that's why right. we want to get it looked at, so there's no environmental hazard. It's not, it's not it's difficult. Not rocket science, I mean, Mesa, but. Arizona, if you've ever been down there, there's like a million of them. You know, and those people all seem to do okay, you know, and, and live healthily. You know, they do it in 110 degree heat. Well, uh, from the perspective that I have on it, Jim, obviously we have to embrace the reality that uh, previous city councils, and uh, uh, for valid reasons, I remember the discussions that were had, decided to uh, make uh, the city of Bader primarily uh, an R1 uh, community, which means it's a single family uh, residence on a, a lot. And so uh, by if you want to overcome that R1 status, then you'd need to engage in a similar council discussion to modify the, the current codes as we have them. That, because that's what, in essence, you're agreeing to, is allowing somebody to, for whatever valid and, and justifiable uh, reasons, uh, bring a second ADU onto that lot. You now have two essential families living on the R1 residential area. And there are some people who don't want that uh, element in their neighborhood. So that was, the, I remember, the justification for it. So that's an issue that we'd have to deal with. But that the council can do that. If they want. So is that yeah. the key per lot? So if you've got yeah. 11 lots and you move, the, <laughs> move them on to a lot and then hook them up to a separate sewer and a separate water, then it's all legit? It well, can't be a main residence yeah. mm -hmm. on an empty lot. It can't be the main residence. So the it's not per lot then? It's it's per buildable lot. Buildable when he says lot, lot he means right. three thousand square or nine thousand square three, feet, which is three city yeah. lots. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't so clarify. Per that. buildable lot, yeah. You have to be <coughs> I, 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 I have really do. <laughs> <laughs> so <coughs> oh, there's a lot of details there. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, are we making progress? I'm not. I'm confused because I've been thrown in the <coughs> residential one code. Mm -hmm. You haven't taken a factor that in? Never thought about the residential one code. Was just well, yeah. worrying about mm -hmm. family member living on the same property. Well, for heaven's sake. No, that's real. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and that is you know, the way the city is um, zoned. Just like you've got industrial zones, you've got your R1 residential zones, and you've got the R2. Oh, Tommy, Tom Carruthers is here. So you've just been confirmed as a member of the planning committee. Well, I, I had to come back from Tacoma. I had VA visit out there. Well, well, let's give him a round of applause for being willing to serve on the planning committee. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Uh, all right. Well, then, um, I know that looking at the clock, the moderator's job. Do we want to uh, take notes and extract uh, from it some of the main talking points and then have them ready for council at our next meeting? <coughs> I think I've heard some good ideas that we can extract and 
codify for your future consideration. Ordinance, that's what it is, and start from scratch. You want to do our development regulations from the beginning? Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. You might want to talk about that. <laughs> well, I'm going to be your Go for it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh my word. Okay, yes, one last comment. Couldn't you have one of those? I cannot ever think of the name of this. One of those little meetings where it doesn't matter and just workshop. workshop mm -hmm. And where you can just focus on this particular item. And the uh, thought occurred to me. That would be easier than having to drag this out in the council meeting. Or even get a couple of council members together, not three, but and then just, and if you have strong opinions about it, do some research and then come back prepared to report on it. Rather than get the entire council together. Did anyone check with Lewis County to see if they all changed their zoning <coughs> laws down there to accommodate an RV sitting on their property? I, I have reached, that's what I was saying at the beginning, I reached out to them but haven't heard back yet. I told them what it was about yeah, when I left the message. Though, too. Um, right. Yeah, it's a different no, bird. Ball game. <coughs> but it's still the same, right next door the, same prop, the same thing. Though, but like Mr. Stamper said, property. we're going to talk to Doyle. He's the expert. Mm -hmm. This for the county. So we've got a target. Now. Okay. I'm going to ask that question that Cindy said. Why does it matter what we do on our own property? So yeah. I'll ask that question as well. Okay. Find out. So do we want to workshop or, or postpone until the next meeting? <coughs> It's a very busy summer. <laughs> <laughs> Only if you're building a park. <laughs> <clears throat> I wouldn't mind coming in a half an hour early on the next meeting and just mm -hmm. workshopping. I'm with Jay. Half hour early on the next meeting. Can you talk to the whole yeah. Half an hour? What the deal? Yeah. For how long? Well, heck, it seems like it wouldn't take very long if we just sat down and just did it. Okay, prior to that, maybe we can have a little a synopsis of the, the discussion we've had, extracting some of the main talking points, so we won't revisit. Okay. 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 Workshop. Okay. Thirty minutes before the next meeting. All right. Then. With that having been unofficially decided, Mike, did you capture that? Yeah. Oh, you got it. Okay. Then uh, let's proceed now with the next item. Um, continue discussion on home-based business options. <coughs> now, I know that um, the last uh, council meeting, um, Mrs. Rogers. Yes. <laughs> You had a re report that uh, you gave to the council for them to review. Mm -hmm. you, they had that, and they're going to read it, and then we're going to continue the discussion. <coughs> Hopefully, you've done your homework. So I'll turn the time over to the council to deliberate on home based business options. <coughs> An expeditious incisive discussion. Yeah. I left my notes at home. Yeah. So, uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Four council members discussed it. It wasn't just a matter of making out a list like no neon signs, no flashing lights after a certain time, you have to allow for so much parking. It was just a matter of writing up a list of the do's and don'ts and the days and the hours, and mm -hmm. were we supposed to do that? It's not been assigned to any one person, mm -hmm. but somebody's got to do it. Yeah. Okay, I make a suggestion. We have a half hour workshop <laughs> at five o'clock <laughs> at our next <laughs> meeting, and this will be half hour, and then we'll go into the RV and we'll get this settled. How's that sound? Anybody interested? Yep. Sounds good. Sounds good. Good. I like it.
Does it have to have a timer? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. That's the decisiveness that we're hoping for. So, five o'clock workshop. <laughs> no, I knew that. This is exactly what was going to happen. Because <laughs> you've got you to gotta have time to just talk about stuff. Mm -hmm. so. yep. Okay, let's um, jump to item five. <clears throat> Continuing discussion on code enforcement officer and building officials. As you know, that's been going on for several months now. And, um, <coughs> The city is, uh, we have a functioning building officer who I'm, uh, I wasn't going get into adjectival characterizations of him, but uh, who's functioning uh, from my administrative perspectives uh, adequately. So it's not like we're bereft of services in that capacity, but uh, we've been challenged to uh, reach out and obtain and I do conduct research on other potential options. <coughs> Our principal option has uh, been to explore with Trent Lougheed, uh, I'm sure our <coughs> county commissioner is uh, aware of um, uh, what's um, an ongoing agreement with the city of Chehalis, who employs Trent Lougheed. And, um, They've reached an agreement to share those services from the city of Chehalis. <clears throat> and I last reported to you that um, they wanted to try it on for size for a month to see the impact that um, uh, that relationship would you know, bring about. So uh, earlier today I spoke at length with Trent and he said that um, uh, it's going uh, well, uh, but the Preliminary indications are that they're going to need to hire a, uh, the city of Chehalis, hire a planner, an additional planner, <coughs> to uh, handle the inflow. And so uh, they're going to, the, their city council is going to deliberate on that proposal on the 25th of June. <coughs> He's confident uh, that they're going to approve that action. And Trent says that um, if that action is approved, then he's confident, I won't say extremely confident, but he's confident that there um, will be a room for communities like ours to access those services. So, uh, he's not pulled any rug out from underneath uh, the city, he's not um, and making any promises that are uh, uh, inappropriate. He's just asking that if we're interested, the potential is still there. And he's not put any costs, and, uh, nothing of that sort is being discussed. But I share that information in this city council meeting with council members as the latest update of that possibility. I know that um, there have been individuals exploring uh, options. I know that Gerald has talked to the City of Napa Fine personnel and uh, with uh, Wedlock, and you can clarify the contacts you've made. <coughs> uh, I might shorten that discussion, however, because I have spoken personally to uh, the Mayor of Wedlock, uh, who is the, obviously, community that has uh, the functioning services, so in association with Napa Vine, <coughs> And he's made it clear to me that, uh, that he's not supportive of that concept. So um, that was very recent. <clears throat> so uh, it kind of obviates the potential uh, attachment or association with the city of Wenlock for that service. <clears throat> as much as we might um, want to see if we could uh, convince them otherwise until we get his support. <coughs> That's not something that we can explore, or we can explore, but it's not going to come to pass uh, as far as his thoughts are. Oh. So uh, that's that. But did you want to share with them your contacts with the Napa Vine? Um, Napa Vine, I just spoke with the city clerk and just kind of said we're exploring, you know, and 
you know, do you know, would, would anyone entertain the idea of us, you know, we're looking for a building official or, or uh, that, and code enforcement services, and she said, well, we don't do any code enforcement, that's all through our police officer, um, our police department, um, and then, uh, but she said, as far as building official is concerned, uh, that would have to be a discussion made with their mayor and uh, their their plan their planner. I can't remember his name. She, I wrote it down. I'm not sure. I thought it was Nick or something. But anyways, um, their public work slash whatever superintendent. Um, and so uh, that's as far as I got with her on that. She also con uh, connected me with the police department, and I spoke with the clerk there, who. Uh, to just to inquire because I know that's been a question that has come up here is about code enforcement and having their police department do code enforcement and so I said how does that work you know I just said how do you how do you do that but so the way they have it written just to try to make it really brief is they have a large um, list of what's considered nuisance violations and those are punishable by a ticket and um, so what they do is um, they receive direction. Um, well, actually, I don't know that they receive direction. Anyways, they determine who's in violation of a nuisance. They give them a 14-day notice, say, your property's in violation of this code, and you have to get it cleaned up. We're going to inspect it in 14 days. If it's not cleaned up, we're going to give you a ticket, and their police department will issue the ticket uh, after the inspection is done. Um, so uh, that's how they handle it in their city with their with those code enforcement. Now there's building code and stuff that's different than nuisance violations that are handled differently. But as far as just the basic nuisance like too tall grass, noise, junk vehicles, garbage, you know, the, the basic <coughs> nuisance item, what you consider nuisance items, those are handled in that way. So. Uh, but their police department pretty much completely handles all those nuisance items. Well, that's the same way that Wenlock and Toledo. Okay, okay. Everybody that's is, the way I understood yeah. it, yeah. Mayor Bradshaw said they were turning theirs over in July the 1st when they get their right. police department back to the code would be to the police department, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, there you have it. My suggestion is that um, um, we hold out the hope that uh, maybe Trent Lougheed uh, with the city of Shehalis and provide an alternative for us. Did you by chance communicate with Castle Rock? We got that on our to-do list. Oh, to-do list, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. We have a comment from the public? Go ahead. Has anybody asked uh, Navavine to give us a proposal on what they would charge for the building official? Did anybody ask Castle Rock or um, any other uh, Chehalis to give us a proposal? I know you talked to Chehalis. Mr. Right. Uh, Bradshaw didn't seem to think that he'd talked to you in months, so I'm surprised okay. that... <laughs> yeah, I talked you know, to Mr. Bradshaw today. Oh, so, well, that was a couple I, days ago. But, so has anybody asked for a proposal um, for Napavine for the uh, uh, per cost, what it would cost to go to them and what it would cost to go to Chehalis? So reach out to them and ask them to... If, if they're interested and if they can do a proposal. When, when I talked to Castle Rock, or not Castle Rock, when I talked to Napa Vine and to Winlock both, they both said that they felt that our mayor should talk to their mayor and see where they're at, if they're even interested in looking at the idea. So that's what I'm bringing to you. Right. Well, their mayor is not interested. Months ago to yeah. do that, right? His mayor, that mayor is not interested in it. Mayor Bradshaw. So, no, I'm talking about Napavine. Yeah, I haven't talked to the mayor of Napa Vine yet. But uh, I'll do that. Be, I, I know what they're going to say, but we'll, I've got to explore those options. So I will. Yep. How do you know what they're going to say? I'm just curious. I don't. I'm just uh, confident uh, with my association with them. I understand. Uh, knowing how they're using the police, it's very similar no, no, to we're talking about building Mr. Bradshaw. Sure. Anyway, uh, I'm going to talk to them and I'll report back. So I hope that's helpful. With that, oh, we have another comment. Uh, well, as for the code enforcement officers, uh, the county, I believe, has one that they use, I mean, and there are police service. Can they actually do that as part of their service with us? We've um, approached that topic with our sheriff's department, 
but um, maybe we can get a refreshed response. Do you remember? The, the sheriff's office doesn't do code enforcement because the county mm -hmm. has its own code enforcement officers. Thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. So. And, and the county doesn't want to do our right. permitting or code enforcement. They've already told right. us that. So uh, any association with a police uh, department, you're not likely going to get a positive support from. So, hey, but we'll ask. So we cover that base. All right, then with that, uh, looking at the clock again, uh, let's uh, proceed with item number six. Council discussion on the council absent, member absence. So, Ms. Costello, you raised that as a talking I did. I would like to, um, Mike, can you hear me? Yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I have um, concerns that um, I take my job very seriously up here. And um, when I chose to take this position, um, I think we all looked at our work schedule and our, our, our life. And I'm concerned that your work schedule may interfere with your position. You were gone for five months last year. And I'm, I'm concerned and I'd like to ask you personally, um, and maybe to everybody else that's been asking me, is what is your work schedule going to be this year? Well, is, is that okay to It's basically the same as it is every year, but I'm here on the phone taking care of it. Just like when you ran the first time, you asked for six months, you no. totally off, and it was okay. But it's kind of funny that this brings up. I think that it's something that me and you should talk about privately because uh, obviously you have something that you need to tell me. Well, well, I, I, and I'm, I'm not going to have a shouting match with anyone, but I'd like to correct that. Um, it was four months, and it was for a family emergency, not for employment. So, so I, and I'm okay, happy to so talk to you, and I'm I, happy to talk to you. Have I not been able to do something? Personally, personally, I, uh, I was here the whole last year when Mike was here, and, and, uh, he was on top of all the topics that we talked about. <clears throat> he actually helped find money in the in the uh, in the uh, the uh, when we when we needed time to find when we were looking for money. He was he was the one that really kind of spearheaded all of that. Um, I don't think even that he's been absent from here. I think that he's been very very Vader minded in his you know, on the phones and all that good stuff, so. Okay, that's fine. I just wanted to bring this up because it bothers me. Yeah, well, I should add here that we went through this topic before and we did do research with our city attorney and I believe we have a documented opinion on the legality of this. And I do not believe, if I recall correctly, that there is any um, legal basis that uh, would disallow this form of participation. So, uh, however concerned you might be, I don't know that there's any legal remedy for it. So, well, my concern was employment. Um, to take the position and know that you're going to be gone for five months out of the year, snowbirds could be on council. But if you're a legal resident, yeah. and uh, everyone knew. That voted for me. Everyone knew my employment situation. So, and except that, yeah, right now I'm more comfortable than everybody else. I'm sitting on a bed. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank well, you yeah, for that it, input. It, it, this, is something, <laughs> this is something that for us to talk about. I'm I'm perfectly okay with my calling in, in my opinion. Yeah. So as I as I my Mike is okay. Mike is unbelievably productive. Council person, so I would, I would hate to, yeah. to lose him. I, I would much rather see his face personally. I don't know. But Have you seen this face? <laughs> <laughs> but I will say that it's gotten a lot better than before. 
because now he, you know, he votes when it's time to vote, and if he's asked a question, he answers it. Before, he just would shout out because he couldn't see what was going on. So I, I think there has been some improvement, but there again, that being said, I would rather see his face than a phone voice. Although you have a very nice phone voice. Yes, uh -huh. it's very distinct. I appreciate everyone's comment, and thank you very much for letting me voice okay. my, my comment. Great. All right. Um, we do have a comment. If the council cares to hear the comment. Sure. Okay, go ahead. Then why don't you all just stay home in your jammies and I'll call in. Just put five phones up there and we'll talk to the five phones. Or six. I mean, you can stay home as that's well. A, that's a thought. Don't yeah. tempt me. Don't tempt me. Last year and the year before with Costello and Mike Lassner, didn't you vote? You're not voting anymore on that, or has it just been voted on some other time I missed? Or? Right. Um, it's kind of a carryover. But, um, okay, duly noted. Thank you for that. Uh, okay. Then uh, I suspect, are you feel comfortable with the conversation? Oh, I'm very on? comfortable. I, I, I like being able to talk to the rest, rest of the council people about my concerns. Perfect. I'm, I'm fine Absolutely. with this. Okay. Yeah. And uh, are we ready to go to number seven? Mm -hmm. Yes, we are. Okay. All right. Our last uh, item is the uh, discussion about the reader board. Yes. yes. Do you know what I'm going to say? You'd like uh, the reader board to advertise the planning and, and uh, Yes, would it be possible that we could talk about using the reader board on the city building for um, meetings, planning board, park board? And I understand that we as a council need to talk about this. Hmm? Why? 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 Well, what is the. the oh, well, uh, the council. And um, uh, you could recommend that uh, we take the public employees' time to put those uh, announcements on the board. But, um, <coughs> so it's certainly something that you could discuss so, uh, by just ratifying. Or a council member could just get the dates and do it themselves and put it yes. up. Yes. If you really want to uh, make it official, you should articulate that that would be uh, is a specific way to advertise a city council meeting or a planning committee meeting. But right now, you have the minimum uh, advertising uh, guidelines as uh, required by the state. So we actually you, exceed the minimum requirements. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I do understand the minimum legal requirements. Um, however, we need to look at something large in our area that tells us that there's going to be a meeting. I think it's just a great um, use of space over there to, to let everybody know. And I know that planning and parks both want people to come to their meetings. Sure. Yeah, the, my experience, the, the, the track record with these, is that um, a lot of times those meetings are uh, postponed for staffing <coughs> challenges, as you well know. Uh, they, uh, they are scheduled regularly now, which is progress. But uh, uh, if you've ever had the uh, opportunity of getting on the ladder and uh, putting the letters up and having to do it, which I have as well, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but you know it's time consuming. And uh, with the frequency of the meetings that uh, would be held, you'd be uh, detracting from our part-time public works employee, uh, who's already doing the daily uh, waste treatment readings at least in the short term. But if, if you were, the council, were determined to add that as um, over and above the legal advertising you know, requirements we already have, then um, certainly we'd respond to the council. Can we just open that up for a volunteer to do it? Right? Well, that's what I would, would strongly suggest. Okay. If there's somebody who feels that strongly about it. Leona and I feel that strongly about it. Oh. Um, and once the, the numbers down here, 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 the numbers down here
acquire an electronic board, which yes. is what I've always wished we had. I was just going to suggest that if you really, really wanted it, you could probably use rate funds, possibly, to get something like that put in. You know, we've priced that before because it's been a regular topic in the last 11 years. It would be about $2,000. Yeah. Huh? I said it would have to be a capital yeah. improvement. I don't know. Is that a capital improvement? Well, we'd have to find it, out. It's a thing. I think it Things. would be. It's a thing. It definitely <laughs> would improve the building. <laughs> I think whatever we can do to get the community more involved um, is a good is a good. I don't think anybody is challenging that. That would be All great. Right. Well, do you need to do another right. like motion? Nope. Nope. No. I don't think we need to make it. Yeah. So we'll explore the feasibility of using some refunds for this. Okay, and then we're going to use and the old system. Yep. Okay. okay. Good. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you. Mm -hmm. okay. Not too much. Hmm? Not too much. Not too much what? Money. Okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's our speed. Parks. 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 Yeah. 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 Not too much. All right, and with that, we've successfully negotiated uh, through, but let's uh, go with our public comment. We have, uh, we have two. two. Two names on the list. Okay. Uh, first is Cindy Radcliffe. Okay. Excuse me. Cindy Radcliffe, 1027 Street. This is a matter of public record. The disrespectful behaviors by the city administration towards its citizens are unacceptable, unjustified, and untenable. We've all heard the name calling, we've all been up here and listened to the dismissive attitude toward people of the community that uh, take their time to come to these meetings. We've heard um, of, or been a recipient of disrespectful treatment at City Hall. We've watched the head shaking and laughter um, towards members of the public who get up here to speak. Now citizens apparently don't even warrant a 50 cent stamp to be notified when a, a major project is going to be done next to their property. Four days before construction started on A Street, four days, the city worker put a notice on the buildings on A Street. That's all the notice they were given. And you can say, well, maybe in a small town they already knew about it. But one family moved in just a week or two before that project started. So that was all the notice that they were given. And so I guess we're just supposed to hope that they're not going to have anything, any need for the parking or the use of the front of their house. According to the city attorney uh, that responded to my request, the owners of the vacant lots on A Street didn't even warrant that. Uh, according to the letter that I received, um, they, the people that own the vacant lots were supposed to read the call for bids in, from April. And if you, by the way, saw that call for bids, it had no information about the project, not how long it was going to take or, or what to expect during the project or when it was even going to start. But that was all the notice that those people that own those vacant lots were given if they even saw it. Now the people that own those vacant lots have over the years kindly allowed the city to use those, that vacant land for celebrations and May Day and Fourth of July and all these other things. And they pay their taxes and they do everything that they're supposed to do. Now most of them don't live in this town, they don't even live in this area. And yet they weren't given even the respect of a 50 cent stamp to put something in an envelope and send it to them and say, you know what, by the way, your property is going to be impacted. Your property might get dusty. It might get, something might get laid on it. People might park on it. People have been parking on our property. I didn't move them off so they could go to the, to the post office. And I didn't say, no, you can't park there. But still, nothing was given to those people. Nothing was told to them ahead of time. And I can tell, I've talked to both of the two people <coughs> past us, and they had no idea. So um, why not return the favor and at least show them the respect of putting something in the mail and saying, by the way, this is what we're going to do. It's obvious that this administration does not have 50 cent worth of respect for the people and the citizens of this town. I firmly believe that. And this treatment is either a total disdain for the citizens of this town or a lack of oversight and direction of the city administration. Either issue lands squarely at the feet of the mayor. He's the one that directs the city staff and why that notice was not sent out. Because I sat in this meeting several times and I said, I'm sorry, are the property owners going to be notified in a timely basis? Oh, sure. Yeah, I'm sure that's going to happen. The, I talked to the uh, people doing the construction. They thought that it had already been done. And they had no idea that all the property owners had not been notified. If the city isn't going to show us respect, yeah, the, then there's a, a time the for a change of leadership. have expired. So thank you for that. Okay, uh, next. Uh, Julie Hedgelin. Julie Hedgelin, 
Ridgeland, 1108 East Street, Bader, Washington, 98593. To all dignitaries, thank you. Uh, what I forgot was my notes. Um, this is directed mostly to the City Council. Um, there is a Ritchie Brothers auction, I believe June 29th. Um, an item above, uh, it was a street sweeper. Send somebody, check it out. Get them approved for Ritchie Brothers, please. Thank you. Um, STP 2018, July 14th and 15th, volunteerism. They need these items. I believe a copy with Jill. She can make a copy for, the, for that. Does anybody know what day the 14th and 15th fall on? Saturday, Saturday and Sunday. Sunday. Correct. Thank you. What was that for? Great. Okay. STP. Thank you. Oh, Great. Yes. Yes. Oh, oh. Great. All right. Um, so if that um, represents the um, list on our report, then we've um, uh, completed our agenda. We will declare this meeting adjourned at 6.27, 7.27 p.m. Thank you all for being here.